Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. In this video, we're going to be talking about the infamous Ford 3.5 liter EcoBoost cam phaser rattle upon startup. And it seems that mainly the Ford F-150s from about 2013 to present day-ish are affected by this and also the Ford Expedition and Lincoln Navigators later on whenever they drop the 3.5 liter in those, they're affected by this particular rattle upon startup also. So I got a great example of this noise. I actually caught it in the act. I'm going to share that with you and also we're going to talk about what in my understanding is the cause of this noise and we'll talk about some fixes and then my experiences with these fixes. All right, so this is a 2018 Ford Expedition, has a 3.5 liter EcoBoost in it and this is one that I recently repaired. Let's go ahead and hear that noise. Okay, so in my experience, this problem usually occurs on a vehicle that's been sitting, not running for quite some time, maybe two to six hours. And then when you go out to crank it up, you get that initial rattle. Well, what's happening is when it sits for that long period of time, all the oil in the VCT unit, also known as a cam phaser, drains out. And if you know anything about how a cam phaser works, oil goes on both sides of the rotor inside the cam phaser unit, and it kind of buffets that rotor and pushes that rotor back and forth to advance and retard the timing. The oil also serves as a buffer between the rotor and the housing. So when the oil has leaked out of a failed cam phaser unit, there's no longer anything there to pad the movement of the rotor inside the VCT unit. So the rotor is just flopping around inside there causing all kinds of noise. Now there is a mechanism inside the VCT unit that is supposed to keep the rotor from flopping around inside the housing whenever there is a lack of oil inside the unit. And this is where the failure comes in. This is the VCT unit locking pin and it has a receptacle that it fits into that causes it to lock the rotor to the housing. And you can see right here, it looks like there's a little bit of wear where that pin goes into the other part of the housing there. And that's where the failure is happening. This pin is not locking in correctly and it's allowing that rotor to move freely from the rest of the housing, thus causing that rattle. In this video clip here, I got a good visual of what's actually taking place under the valve cover whenever this problem is occurring. You can see as I'm rotating the crankshaft, the cams are moving in relation to the crankshaft. But you'll see that one of the camshafts here stops rotating. And then I keep rotating the crankshaft and then all of a sudden you'll see that the cam will all of a sudden move rapidly in the direction that I'm turning. What's going on there is the locking pin hasn't locked in and the spring that's on the face of the VCT unit is yanking that rotor into place. And of course, the rotor is directly connected to the camshaft, and that's why you see the camshaft move so rapidly in the clockwise direction. So you can imagine the scenario taking place repeatedly after the vehicle's been started until the oil pressure builds up. So what's the repair for something like this? Well, in my experience, there have been two different options made available. One would be to update the PCM to the latest calibration, and supposedly that's supposed to take care of the rattle upon startup. However, I've not had very good luck with that. I've done several of them, and it's always continued to rattle. And I believe that the software updates that are designed to take care of this rattling noise is only applicable for the later model F-150s, Expeditions, and Navigators, maybe around 2017 or 18 to present day. It doesn't apply to the earlier F-150s, Expeditions, and Navigators. Now the second option made available, and in my opinion this is the best way to repair this, is to replace all four VCT units, aka cam phasers. Now I've done plenty of these and so far it seems like the repair holds up pretty well. Uh, at least I don't get them coming back the next day complaining of the rattling still being there. So I would suggest going that route with this. Now if you do go this route, I would suggest being sure that you go with the latest and greatest design for these cam phasers. I believe that Ford may have updated the design on these cam phasers a couple of times. I know for a fact that they did here recently. Before you could see the, the spring on the front of the cam phaser, it was exposed. And on the new cam phasers, which has a different part number, the spring on the front there is encased in this metal cover here. So I'm not sure other than that what all Ford has done differently with the design of this cam phaser, but there is at least that different about this cam phaser. And I'm not sure really how that's going to improve it or 
possibly prevent this problem from occurring in the future, but usually parts that have problems like this are updated to solve those problems. It would be best to go with the updated parts designs, in my opinion. Now, what can you expect as far as the longevity of this repair? How long will this repair hold until this problem actually happens again? Realistically, I believe that the answer is relative. As mentioned earlier, I believe that Ford has updated the design of these phasers a couple of times, and the performance of those parts and the longevity of those parts may differ a little bit. Now, I have heard stories of this problem recurring within 30 to 70,000 miles after the repair has been done, but Realistically, I don't have any experience firsthand with that. So far, all the ones that I have repaired personally haven't come back yet, and I've been doing these cam phasers for several years now. Now, that doesn't mean that they didn't have a problem with it, and I just don't know about it. Who knows? To my knowledge, I personally haven't had any comebacks after replacing these cam phasers. Well, that's my take on this issue, guys. Uh, if you guys can add any more information to this, please feel free down in the comments there. I don't know everything about everything, of course. Uh, you guys already know that. But this is just my experience and my guesstimation as to uh, what actually goes on inside there and what the best course of action, as far as a repair, is concerned to take. You guys, as always, please read the entire description down below this video. Before you apply any of this knowledge, there may be some things I need to clarify. That's where I do that. And also, please read the disclaimer at the very end of it. Also, I would like to mention, guys, please pay attention to the date that this video was uploaded. It seems that these kind of situations evolve as time goes on. There may be a better repair available at the date that you actually watched this video. So keep in mind, if you're watching this in the future, several years from now, this may be old old and outdated information, and uh, if, if I find out anything that is old and outdated, I'll try my best to make a comment down in the comments there and also notate it in the description to help you out, but you do need to do all your own research and make sure all this information is up to date and applicable to your vehicle. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good one.